NASA is hailing it as a giant leap forward. A robotic spacecraft built by a private sector company has landed on the moon. It was the first controlled descent to the moon by a US-built spacecraft since 1972, when NASA's Apollo program last put astronauts on the lunar surface. The unmanned spacecraft, named Odysseus, is carrying a mix of commercial cargo and NASA science instruments on its journey. The company behind the mission, called Intuitive Machines, Machines, hopes to conduct research and collect data to better understand the lunar environment, particularly the Moon's South Pole. Mission Director Tim Crane says while the spacecraft's journey is at an end, its work is only just beginning. What we can confirm, without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the Moon and we are transmitting. So congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. Well, Keith Cowing is an editor at NASA Watch. He's been, of course, watching this all very closely. Keith, welcome back. Just some initial reactions from you. How excited are you to see this happening? Well, as I mentioned before, I the last time this happened, um, I would... Can you hear me? Can yeah, we can hear you. On the, on the surface. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button here. Um, the last time I was on, I said, well, it's been half a century since we saw this and I was in high school. So old guy like me, I'm happy to see us back on the moon. I was asked, I was on another air at the time, and they said, well, how will we know when it lands? Because the numbers are all over. And I said, watch the guy sitting at the console. They'll lean back and they'll start clapping. That's when you know they landed on the moon. That's exactly what happened. Keith, what, what can you tell us about the state of the aircraft after the landing? How's it going? Well, the, the initial problem was that they knew it had landed. They just didn't get the right signal. Now they have a weak signal. It could be something as simple as, as it lands, it has these dishes on it. Maybe they're aimed a little bit in the wrong direction, and you have to fiddle with that. But they're getting data, and they're happy with what they're getting so far. So uh, the spacecraft is alive, and it's talking to Earth. That's the best news you can you could possibly get. I guess that is the main thing, isn't it? Just explain to us what happens now. Well, um, they're going to probably want to make sure they can turn up the volume a bit so they can get the most data necessary. And supposedly, when this spacecraft came in and landed, it if this is your lander, it threw a little camera out, and that camera supposedly was planned to take a picture of the spacecraft coming in. So at some point, we'll see that video, and that'll be kind of cool. But then they get down to the business of the science, which is why we're looking at this probe on the moon in the first place. OK, and that's to do with the moon's south pole, isn't it? Uh, what, what's so special about this area of the moon? Well, if I could use my little thing here, everything we've launched to the moon has always been around the equator. And this time we went down to the south pole. Now, it's a little more difficult to do that, but it's just rocket science. But why are we going to the south pole of the moon? Well, various spacecraft have discovered what we clearly think is water ice at the South Pole. This probe is one of several that will go there to confirm what we think we already know. And then why is water important? Well, you ask, if I'm an astronaut living on the moon, I can drink it, I can breathe part of it, or I could use it to make rocket fuel to come home. And everything that I can get from the moon, I don't have to bring with me, which makes things a lot easier. Does water in any way indicate that there could be a presence of life or anything like that? Oh, warm my heart. I'm an astrobiologist, so you, I don't know. And I, I've had this discussion with people. A lot of the reason why there's water there is that comets may well have crashed into the moon over the billions of years. And we know comets have a lot of what we would call goo. Technically, it's organic material. Maybe that's there. Maybe that's what we'll discover when we make the first direct look at what we're seeing. And, you know, I could posit a guess, even if there's nothing alive, if the chemicals that we find there in the water indicate that organic chemistry is at work, well, gee, if it's happening on the moon, uh, the chances that it could happen on Mars or Europa probably go up a bit. But again, I'm just speculating. Let's, let's see what's there. I'd be happy if there's only water. <laughs> Can't wait to talk to you about some of the findings, which we'll get, I guess, hopefully very soon. Keith Cowing, editor at NASA Watch. Really appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure.